All right, and we're live again. Uh, Wisdom 1.9. This is our fourth installment. And uh, man, we've had some good, uh, we've had some good uh, conversations over the last few months here. Uh, we uh, are excited tonight. We've got a, uh, a man that, uh, I mean, I've been talking to him off and on for the last couple weeks. And uh, every time we get on the phone, it's at least an hour. So that's just how much, how much God is, is doing in his life and through his life. And, and uh, we're really going to learn some stuff tonight. Uh, just want to introduce to you guys, uh, Mike Johnson. Hey, I'm so glad to be here at uh, Finish Line Christian Center, Pastor Shannon Williams. Let me say to everybody that's watching, if you're looking for a, a good home church to get plugged into, this is it. Uh, it's amazing how I first met him when one of your members come to home prayer that we mm -hmm. had. And uh, she seen several people that was healed at the home prayer. And she said, you have got to meet our senior pastor. He's so much like you. He believes mm -hmm. just like you. And oh, I'll yeah. never forget, buddy, when I walked in the church that day and, and heard him speak. And I'm like, yep, this is him. Yeah, Shannon, Shannon, Pastor Shannon's a good pastor, real good pastor. I've, I've been fortunate enough to serve with him for about 18 years almost now. Uh, whenever we uh, started going to church together, our, our daughters were, were crawling, and now they're in college. So, yeah, it's, it's been something. But uh, I want to I open this up. What I did in the last few episodes or the last few uh, things is it's just a, what I call pick one. It's, it's, it's kind of fun. It, uh, it's just a little way to break the ice, you know, some of, us, some of us serious and some of us not so serious. But I think it learns, we can learn a little bit about you right off the bat. So I'm going to give you a person, place, or thing, two of them, two or three of them, and you pick the one you most prefer. How's that sound? Okay. All right. The hot or cold weather? Hot or cold. I, I like cold weather better. Cold weather. Yeah. Yeah, this, this heat can get to you sometimes. Yeah. That's good. Well, this, um, what about mountains or beach? Oh, goodness. My wife loves the beach. I love the mountains. Mm -hmm. That's where my mom and dad were from. My mom was from uh, Nanahala, North Carolina, and my oh, dad yeah. was from Bryson City. Okay, yeah. We, we just went there, did some tubing, um, the, the band, the, the, the praise yeah. band, about, uh, about two or three weeks ago. A lot of fun up there. Nana, Nanahala River? Uh, it was actually a small uh, creek up there, okay. but it was in the Bryson City area. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, it was a lot of fun. Hey, man. Let's see. Are you an early riser or a night owl? Mm -hmm. Or maybe both? Late, <laughs> lately, I've been kind of uh, a night owl by staying up in, in the live stream. We've been doing the live stream for seven days a week. Uh, this 23rd of this month was 70 straight months. So uh, I'm usually uh, between 930, 1030, or if I'm out of town, uh, like last night, I'll, I'll get on the live stream just as soon as I can get back in. I was out of town last night uh, doing a softball tournament, uh, helping officiating. I didn't get into uh, about 1030, and at uh, 11 o'clock, I was on there sharing the gospel. Hey, did you say 70 or 7? 70. 70 months. Straight. And uh, yes, that's every day. Every so, day, seven days a week. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Where's that at now? That's that you can just look under Facebook under your name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Under uh, Mike Johnson. Uh, you'll see a picture of me and my wife and you'll see behind the car. Uh, I love that. There's a gold cross that's mm -hmm. behind the car. My wife reminds me all the time that you notice it's behind my car, right? It wasn't behind <laughs> mine, but uh, I was on the phone. Uh, we was working on the event breakthrough that was here at uh, Finish Line Christian Center. And the day before, I was coming up through Mount Holly Middle School, and I told my wife, I said, stop the car. I looked up, and it looked like just as clear as could be, just in the sky, an angel. And mm -hmm. I jumped out, got my phone, the camera, got ready to take the picture, and gone. And my wife was like, well, I saw it. I'm a witness. I said, I know, but that's just not the same. People are going to think we're crazy. Uh -huh. So the very next day, a uh, pastor calls me and says, be remember me in prayer. I've got throat cancer. And they said, mm. I might not make it. And so getting ready to pray, I look outside. And right there in my driveway is a gold cross illuminating. Yeah. And I said, pastor, hold that thought. I got to take care of something. Uh -huh. So I run out. I told my wife. First of all, I was told my wife. I said, do you see this? And she goes, is that what I think it is? I said, mm. oh, yeah. And I'm not missing this one. So I run out, took the picture snapped it and then i went back in and called the pastor and i said okay we can pray and i asked the lord i said what does a gold cross represent and he said that's my confirmation for you to tell him that he'll live and not die 
That's good. And he's still alive. Oh, right? he's alive. Alive and well. Going mm-hmm. all over the country. Man, that is awesome stuff. Man, this guy's full of stories like yeah. this. Uh, let's see. Uh, fried chicken or pizza? Oh, goodness. Probably pizza. <laughs> I like fried chicken. Yeah. I um, like fried chicken, too, but I've been eating probably more pizza lately. Ah, I hear you. Uh, <laughs> as far as music, is it rock and roll, country, or hip-hop? Uh, music. If it's not Christian, lifting up, edifying, exalting Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. I can't listen to it. I hear you. It makes Good my stuff. head hurt. It makes me <laughs> sick. Uh, and my wife go. will tell you, anybody that's around me knows he's listening to 106.9, 98.3, or I'm mm-hmm. listening to a gospel track. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, a, I guess, a little bit of all, because Christian yeah. music, you can well, find you can, it. Yeah, you They've can, got different genres yeah, and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. Good Just stuff. Just different, different styles. But, again, you know, I'm a firm believer of this. You know, the, we all know that the worship leader uh, was known as Lucifer. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he also was known as an angel of light. Yeah. But I really believe that what he has done and the, the spirits that follow him is perverted music. Music was meant to lift up, edify, and exalt Jesus Christ. That's right. And so I believe that when people are asking me, I'm like, hey, uh, because you know, if you're listening to music, music will dictate to you. And, and so you listen to a song that's talking about all this bad stuff, and the next thing you know, you're having nightmares like movies. You're having mm-hmm. nightmares and so forth, or, or bad dreams. So I'm kind of like, for me, when I'm going down the road, it's either no music or it's praise music. And when I'm in my house, it's like one time, Brian, I was sitting here, and the enemy was trying to put me under attack. And I said, you know what? Open your mouth one more time. I'm going to go in the kitchen. I'm going to put some praise music on. And everybody knows I can't dance, but I'm going to give my best. By that yeah. time, enemy's like, you remember what you've done in 1977? I said, you know what I'm getting ready to do right now? So I went in there, and I remember my wife was in the other room, and she heard me just holler out, say, just shut up and leave me alone. And she's like, who are you telling shut up? <laughs> you know, but uh, I put it on praise music, and I'll tell you what. I've I done that two or three times, but I had the mindset that we're going to do this until you back off. And, and, and leave uh-huh. and, it, and it happened that's good and m- music is so important um yes. you know it, it sets the environment you know for and it, it kind of ushers in the spirit you know it just really opens up and what you'll notice that if you ever come to finish line our church is sort of backwards in the way that a lot of people come down for prayer during praise and worship you know yeah. a lot of churches it's not till the end when you have altar call uh our altars are usually full during praise and worship and uh, so sometimes we're up there playing for almost an hour before uh, Pastor Shannon gets to preach. But isn't that a confirmation of God's word? I inhabit yeah. mm-hmm. the praise of my people. And, you know, um, I, you know, being a part of the band, there's days when we're missing notes, when we're, when we're sounding to our trained ears, we're sounding bad. Yeah. But people are, are getting fed. People are just down here just teared up, crying, and, and getting it right with God. And it's like, hey, man, we're, this is good. Yeah. And some days we're spot on and nobody's, uh, nobody's moving. So it's those days when we're really not playing that great are some of the best days because there's such a good uh, acceptance of what's going on. Yeah, I'll take, I, I used to be the drummer on our praise team. Oh, yeah. And love music, you know. And, mm-hmm. and the one thing that I'll tell everybody that I have learned over the years, the anointing is the key. You can have some of the most talented musicians, but if the anointing is not there, it's just like you can have some of the most talented speakers. But it's not me or Brian or Pastor Shannon. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that heals, saves, and delivers. He alone. Mm -hmm. He uses the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to lift up, edify, and exalt, bring truth and revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And without that anointing, all, all we are is a tinkling symbol. And that's the that's proof right. of it. That's what I tell people all the time. I'll take somebody in music that is anointed all day long because then people will be like, I didn't think that sounded that good, but you see how many people was shouting and praising. Mm, good deal. Let's see. I've just got a few more of these. Okay. Uh, uh, pick ones. Okay. Uh, one, up, one more fun one okay. and then some serious ones. Uh, Ric Flair or Dusty Rhodes? Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I used to be an amateur wrestler in high school. Oh, man. Yeah, and I used to uh, be friends with one of Ric Flair's competitors. So I, I loved the, 
I reckon you can see the flamboyant of Ric Flair many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I would probably, probably in my younger days, I would say, hey, Ric Flair, but you know what? In your latter days, you appreciate the dusty roads of the world that is not looking for the attention. He's just, uh, just down and getting it done. There Amen. you go. That's good, man. That's good. Um, let's see, Old Testament or New Testament? Oh, goodness. I love both of them, but uh, I'm more probably uh, geared towards uh, the New Testament. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite scripture verses, John 14, 12. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me will do the same things and even greater. I tell people, John 14, 12 is a confirmation of who you are in Christ Jesus, or it's a conviction of who you could be. Uh, we need to quit making excuses for what we can't see, what we mm -hmm. can't be, and uh, we, we need to get it done. And uh, that's one of the things I think the Lord is looking for in this day. He's looking for the spirit of Elijah's to come forth, but to finish it, mm -hmm. to finish it. Not that when the Jezebel spirit shouts out and says, okay, uh, you just wrecked my plan, so I'm going to wreck your life. No, uh, yeah. we've got the God that not only will see us through it. He says, uh, I love this. He, he says that he knew us before we were formed. Think That's right. about that mm -hmm. in Jeremiah. That's right. Okay. And then I'm reminded also uh, of, of, his, of his word that says that nothing's impossible with God. So we've got the word of God to stand on in the truth of the word. And, hey, uh, we might not feel like it. He shows us the route of escape. But he also says to rejoice. I know sometimes, uh -huh. pa Pastor Brian, it's hard to say, uh, well, I ain't feeling like shouting right now. Mm. My goodness, just the thought if, of eternal salvation. How many, you know, that's watching this live stream will say, man, I'm going to work, I'm gonna work uh, for five years to get two weeks vacation. I'm yeah. going to work my whole life to get uh, the uh, Social Security, right? Uh -huh. But there ain't no plan like the eternal plan. That's right. Amen. Good deal. That's the best plan going. <laughs> and, and guess what? You ain't got to put forth all that because he doesn't say you're going to earn this by good deeds. He says you mm -hmm. get this by faith. That's right. Amen. That's good stuff. I love it. Well, uh, speaking of the New Testament, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Oh goodness! Uh, again, I love all. I love all four of them. I've got it's scripture verses pick. in each, each one. I think uh, mm, I, I would probably say maybe, especially right now, leaning towards Matthew because I like I like that scripture verse to talk about the Lord's prayer, and everybody mm -hmm. I know yes, knows yeah. that Matthew six, and where we need to educate people because it says, "My children perish from lack of knowledge." Okay. Mm -hmm. How many of us know somebody, Matthew 6, you look at, four, I think 14 says, if you forgive others, the Heavenly Father will forgive you. But how many people that's watching this live stream understand verse 15? I believe mm -hmm. that's the one that says, but if you forgive not others, the Heavenly Father will not forgive you. That's right. We don't get to pick and choose the rules. We uh -huh. might not like them. We might not like the, the, uh, the verses. But God put it in there for a reason. It's way beyond our mentality. Because we could sit here and say, you know what, Pastor Mike? I ain't forgiving that person. Mm -hmm. They hurt me bad. Well, so you're going to tell me you're going to hold a grudge against them when God says he will not forgive you if you hold that grudge? Why would you play right into the enemy's hand? Yeah. That is good. Well, let's see. Um, what, about, uh, what about Peter or Paul? Oh, goodness. I love... Uh, mm. You know, I would probably say... The, the thing I appreciate about Peter... In a lot of the ways, he was so uneducated. Mm -hmm. He was what a lot of us would say, hey, I'm been from the school of hard knocks. Yeah, that's right. right. That's good. Paul, the great uh, Pharisee, yeah. tra trained by one of the greatest Pharisees. But remember what Paul said, that once you figure it out, it's worth dying for. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about what Paul went through. He said to die is the game. That's right. That means that you can look death right in the face and say, you know what? You might not be wanting to get rid of me as quick mm -hmm. as you think you are because uh, all you're doing is usher me right up on up into the presence of the Most High. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you might want to really know what I know that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's what I appreciate. Uh, Peter is one that we can look at, all of us, and say, that's right. yeah. man, God can use me. 
I, he, yeah. he used Peter. Peter sat there and said, oh, I can tell you right now, I'll never turn my back on you. And the Lord had to correct him and say, uh -huh. get from behind me, Satan. <laughs> he called him Satan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peter, Peter, they both came from such different walks of life. Yes. But then they both did a lot of really great stuff. So it's, um, yeah, I, I enjoy both of them. To yeah. me, I think Peter is a lot like uh, the Ric Flair. Yeah. Because he, he liked to run his mouth. Yeah. Sometimes he would be able to walk to walk. Sometimes he wouldn't walk to walk. Yeah. So I, I like both of them. But, uh, well, how about when Peter was flogged? Uh -huh. And, you know, Peter denied Christ. I love right. the part when Jesus appears back before me and says, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Peter, Peter, do you love me? Ask him three times. Three then. times. Peter realized why he did when he mm -hmm. asked him the third time. But wasn't it amazing that Peter, that after he seen the resurrected Christ, he's like, I don't care how many times y'all beat me and flog me. You ain't shutting me up. Even mm -hmm. to the point that he said, I'm not even, be, I'm not even worthy <clears throat> to be crucified as he was, so crucify me upside down. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Well, that's it. That's good on our, uh, on our pick ones there. Uh, I think it's just a lot of fun, you know. Yeah. You get to learn a little bit about just the, what, what people do on an everyday life, and then you get to learn a little bit about, about their uh, faith as well. But I'd like to learn a little bit about Mike Johnson, though. I, I, I met you uh, probably about a year ago, yeah. So, uh, and I know you're from the Gaston area, but uh, tell us a little bit about growing up in this area, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm from uh, this area right here. Actually, my childhood days was just a couple miles from here on uh, Woodlawn Road, Mount Holly. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents was friends with Pastor Shannon's parents. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of strange how all of this come about because I said when, when he told me he was building here, I was like, do you ever think he was going to be in Mount Holly? He goes, nope. And I said, isn't it amazing, you know, that our paths have crossed uh, here in Mount Holly, just like one of the guys that used to be from Mount Holly that did real talk. They had about 20, 30,000 people that were most of the people uh, were people going through rehab and so forth. And we met through, <clears throat> through the live stream. Mm -hmm. So I went to East Gaston High School, graduated in 1978. Mount Holly has uh, been my home place uh, ever since I was been uh, born and uh it's just something that i, I would have I, I knew i had a calling on my life in high school but i was one of those that ran from it because you know yeah. in high school i was all involved in sports and stuff and it just wasn't cool anymore to uh to uh be a christian so to speak yeah so i ran from it as long as i could run and then when the lord just said uh uh-uh you ain't running no more that was the end of that could, could you go into a little more detail on, on, you know, when you first decided, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with Christ. I'm going, I'm well, going with Christ. I, I give my life in junior high, uh, to, to Christ. Uh, I went to the, uh, I was in the Boy Scouts. I dropped out right when I was getting ready to get my Eagle, which mm -hmm. I still think back. What was you thinking? Okay. I love sports. Uh, and <clears throat> I remember that my daughter, my middle daughter, was supposed to be going to vet school. And I was like, when she come home one day and said, Dad, I got to change the plans. I said, yeah, you're going into the ministry, right? She goes, yeah, how'd you know? I said, well, your dad ducked it for, for so long. I said, praise God um, uh, that, that you're going. And so um, I basically got out of church for a while. My uh, friend, Brenda Gardner, she's my youngest daughter's godmother, she used to keep saying, because I got involved in politics and business, I used to build and run subway stores. And she said, when are you going to do what's important? Hmm. Building the kingdom. You're helping people build companies and all this other stuff, and you're not using the gifts that God gave you. And then I did something that changed my life. I said, okay, God, I hear what she's saying. I know I got a calling. If it requires you to crush me, mm -hmm. do whatever it requires to get my attention. I just need to know. And I own my own company and all of a sudden the company come to a crawling stop uh, I, I started getting into the word this was in uh, the early 2000s started getting into the word to the point that I started reading I said I'm gonna read through the Bible Matthew Matthew uh, chapter 1 through 5 uh, and uh, Genesis 1 through 5 what started out to begin with 10 15 minutes a day soon become 10 12 hours a day and then my wife was having people from our church, pastor, saying, I think your husband's depressed. 
my goodness, he can't put the Bible down. Uh -huh. But I did, and just we started having prayer at the house, and just miracle after miracle was happening. And then it really went into uh, another gear in 2015, February, February the 3rd. Now, February the 2nd, anybody that's on the live stream watching knows what it's like to have a fur baby mm -hmm. and you love your pets. Yeah. Me and my wife had just got home from Planet Fitness, and my youngest dog that was a Jack Russell Chihuahua mix went into a seizure, and she died mm. right there in my arms. And I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and I said, God, you called me to go share the gospel, but the doors are not opening, and now what are people going to say when they find out that my favorite dog's died and nobody can do anything? So I put mm. her downstairs in the basement, wrapped her up with her favorite play toy, and I said, I'm going to work tomorrow, and when I come home, I'm believing my little baby girl is going to come back alive. Got to work, got another phone call. Uh -huh. This one was from my dad, and he said, you need to come quick to the hospital. Your mother's been admitted, and now they've declared her brain dead. Mm. And I'm really reeling now. February the 3rd. It was raining. It was cold. I went outside, and I just wept and wept. I said, God, this is a little bit too much. But I'll make a promise. You raise my mom up, they'll never shut me up. Mm. And so I went to the hospital. Uh, and two hours later, two hours, 30 minutes later, then two hours and 56 minutes later, after I'd went back home to bury my little dog, digging out in the cold, hard, froze ground, raining, the doctors called and said, is the Johnson family there? And somebody said, yeah. He said, you need to come to the back. You ain't going to believe this. Went back to the back, and my mom was sitting up in bed, mm. prophesying after being brain dead for three hours. It's brain dead for three hours. Yeah. Man. And a week before this, you know, you was talking about what changed your attitude. I, and, I, and I challenge everybody on the live stream, ask, ask God to deal with you this way. The Lord said to me, I was up there at uh, praise at my home church. Up front, as Brian was talking about, people just crying out to God. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, open my eyes. And the Lord, the first time, said this to me. He said, I am so disappointed in what I've seen. I poured all this into you and look. And my excuse was, God, I'm, I'm asking for permission from all these pastors to come and share the gospel. And the Lord called me out right there and said, when did I ask you for permission? Uh -huh. When did yeah. I tell you to handle it this way? Did I not tell you to go by faith? And I said, okay, I will. So I'm sitting up there, and Pastor Fred Morrison's sitting over there at the front. And about the time, I said, okay, God, give me another word. I don't know how many of y'all done that. Hey, that's a pretty cool word. Give me another one. <laughs> but I want this to be crystal clear. Make sure mm -hmm. I don't mess this one up. And then he said this. I will remove every obstacle that you let get in the way. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I got that. I understand that. That's pretty serious. But I said, but how about the obstacles that get in my way that's not my fault that other people put there? He said, I get rid of them too. Mm. And you know what he's done? Is when I've had people attack me on the live stream uh, in the past, like Satanists, I can't even get the atheists and Satanists on there no more. Satanists yeah. used to get on there and try to terrorize me, but then when they realized we can't stop all these healings, they're kind of like, we ain't going to mess with him no more. <laughs> yeah, there but, you go. But uh, what I remember saying is I said, God... Can I pray as Elijah did? And can I pray for them to be dealt with? Because they was on there saying ugly things to Christians. Mm -hmm. Even stuff like, we hoping y'all die and this and that. And the Lord said to me, no, you don't have the right to do that. And he said, I will burn the evil out of their heart by letting them see the love that you have for me and watch what I do. And I have actually seen some of them, first of all, go into attack mode. And then before it's over with, by listening, just like recently a guy said, uh, I don't believe any of this is real. And I said, uh, you know, where are you from? He's probably on here watching now. He's going to be visiting here soon. Yeah. He said, uh, uh, I said, where you, where you live? And so I told him I was going to bring my friend, Brother Jeremiah here, up to Lincoln, to the Waffle House. He said, they ain't, this ain't real. This guy's full of crap. And I said some other stuff. And everybody on the live stream said, why don't you just sit down with him if you think all this is a joke? Why don't you uh -huh. be willing to meet with him and see? 
And he says, okay. So the first time he didn't, he, he, something come up. But I got to minister to all the uh, staff at Waffle House. So I said, hey, I'll come again. So I went the second time. He showed up. Praise God. I was like, man, you don't even know what you just walked into. <laughs> but what was so neat, as soon as he showed up, God gave me a word for the employee. And I said, I'm going to show you how real my God is. The gift of prophecy. I said, watch this one. And I remember asking the, the young lady. He told me that she just rededicated her life, actually. And God gave a word about what she's going to do when she gets out of school. So I asked him, I said, I want you to pay attention. Watch what's going to happen. And then ask her, what do you want to do after school? She's got ready to start. Whoa, 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 don't do that yet. I need your pen. And I need a napkin. And wrote down her answer before she shared it. See, that's what got his attention because he's like, there ain't no way this is real. How can this happen? How could he know this? But when I told him, it was the, the Lord that gave it to me. And what I found out was the guy that was telling me God wasn't real had a calling on his life, rededicated his life. Now he's preaching and at Waffle House preaching. So he called me the other yeah. day. He said, everybody's asking, when you coming back up here? I just got through preaching the word of God in Waffle House. Man, I tell you, you know what I'm hearing my, the, these stories here is, is it seems like things really started to click for you when you decided, hey, I'm just going to be obedient and I'm just going to step out in faith. You know, I think a lot of people are just, they're like you're saying, they're waiting on concrete, crystal clear, go do it. When yeah. sometimes God says it, it's there right in front of you, just do it, you know? Amen. So I think, you know, I'm hearing a lot of that. That's, you know, you're just being obedient. And you're walking in faith. Amen. And, uh, you know, God's moving because of that. And that's awesome stuff. Amen. But I, I remember, Pastor, uh, after this happened with my mom, several pastors asked me to go to CMC Hospital to pray for a pastor that was dying. And I told him, I said, I'm going to show you something. I said, this is the difference in walking in faith and just saying you believe, but you really don't. The enemy knows if you don't. And so I was down at the bottom floor and I said, uh, God's amazing. <clears throat> and everybody was like, yeah, looking at the floor. People were devastated because they were over there to visit loved ones. And I said, no, no, I need y'all to look up and I want to look into your eyes. And I said, let me tell you how good my God is. And when I shared my mom's miracle, it mm -hmm. didn't go from his dragging on the floor. It went from, are you kidding me? I said, no. I'm not kidding you. The first person said, I've got a child that's uh, not expected to live. Will you go see him? I said, yeah. But then it went from, you ain't even got to go see him. Mm -hmm. Will you just pray right here? Because I believe the faith that you, that you have, like the centurion, he's going to be healed. Mm -hmm. I said, we'll do it. Then another one. Will you do this? Yeah. Then the third one. The woman started weeping and said, my husband's upstairs brain dead. I believe God sent you here for a reason. Oh, man. And uh, she said, will you just speak it? I said, what floor, what room? I'm coming, but I've got a lot of rooms to visit. And, and we did. But what's so neat that when I come off the elevator on that floor, it was the doctor that met me. And he met me in the hallway and said, this is unbelievable. She told me that you're coming up here. And that you're the one that give her a word for her husband. Let's take you into the room. The whole family's waiting. He went from brain dead to he was responding. Amen. And they was telling me, even, even some of the people, what do you call them, chaplains? Yeah, I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. You're awful perky today. Uh, <laughs> sounds like God's moving. Uh, you need to be telling people. I said, well, I am, but I'm starting with you. Uh -huh. I said, I'm starting with you because you're the one that need to hear first. And there was three of them. And what was amazing is all three of them was like, well, we can't wait to hear more. And I'm like, well, here's my number. Call me. I want to come visit your church. And we know what the answer to that is. Yeah. Uh, I, that's what I'm saying. What, what, when, when the Lord says uh, <clears throat> that, uh, what, that few, few are chosen. That's right. And, uh, and I, I will tell you, one of the things I tell people, I, I wish that, more people would because I, my wife gives up a lot mm -hmm. for me to be on every day a lot sometimes i'm on two and three times sometimes yeah. it might be where god just like this weekend i've done uh you know the ball field saturday 
the ball field today Sunday because it's an awesome opportunity. You know, everywhere your feet hits is an opportunity to win souls. As somebody said one time, Pastor, they got on there and said, this is not the right time for you to share him into our group. It was a flea market. Mm -hmm. I said, it yeah. is the right time. There's never a wrong time. That's right. Never a wrong to, time. To, mm -hmm. to, to, yeah. to the gospel. And so just remember that when you're going out, you might sit there and say, well, what can I do? Man, if you can talk and tell everybody about you, your wife, your husband, your children, your job, or whatever, it's not our wife and our children. And listen, I love my wife and I love my children. I love my grandchildren. They didn't give me eternal life. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. Christ has. And, and I'm reminded of this. The way we live our life, the things that we say, the things that we do show the appreciation we have for the sacrifice that he gave. I don't think it can be put any simpler than that. That's good. Yeah, and, and like, I think you were hitting on it as, you know, your mission field is, is everywhere you go. And uh, there's, there's people that you're going to be hanging out with or working with that, that I'm never going to meet. But you can, you can witness to them in some way. And sometimes it may not even be a word. It may just be how you uh, carry yourselves. You know, how you, so that dude works hard, man. What, that guy's always smiling. What's up with him? Amen. And then you open that door to where you can talk a little bit about uh, Jesus and a little bit about your Christian faith. Um, yeah, wherever you walk, that is where you're, uh, that is a mission field. Disney World. Anybody yeah. knows me? Mm -hmm. I, I, every time <clears throat> we go on vacation, if we go on vacation, I take everybody with me. Mm -hmm. I went to Disney World and God gave me a word. Here's Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, all of them. And they're, they're encouraging a child in a wheelchair. Uh -huh. I told my wife, I said, I'll be right back. i got to take care of something. She goes, what are you doing? I said, you watch what happens with Mickey and Minnie. <laughs> so I walk up and I said, hey, come here a minute. And they was all watching. The parents was watching. The child in the wheelchair was watching. I said, Mickey, listen, it's true. I'll give you this. You bring the magic. But it ain't but one that can bring the miraculous. And that's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, man, everybody got excited. I started to walk away, and the staff come over and tapped me on the back and said, Sir, we need to talk to you. And I thought, oh, you got to be kidding me. Y'all going to correct me out here? <laughs> but you know what it was? The staff said, you just done what we can't. And we want to tell you how awesome this is because mm. we want to do this, but we're not allowed to. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what are y'all going to do? I mean, what are they going to do? Throw me out? Nah, it ain't happening. Uh -uh. That's what I tell people like Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg and everybody else. You might say, but hey, it's one thing I do know, Pastor. Facebook, if you're listening, which you are, if I'm allowed to be shut down completely, mm. it ain't because of you. It's because God is determined I'm going to let this happen for a season because yeah. there ain't nothing happening outside uh, his right. approval. And that's yeah. what I love, love about it. And for all these people that think that, what is it old saying is they got a godlike complex, mm -hmm. but they sure can't carry it. And they better be careful or they'll be the next Nebuchadnezzar. Read yeah. our history books. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be something if you got some of the political giants out eating grass in a field? Yeah, that, that's, that could happen. That's where we're headed, right? Yeah, it, it's crazy. And I want to talk about that in a little bit here. Um, but I do want to, I want you to share with the, with the people uh, all the stuff you've got going on. I know you're doing the Facebook thing uh, uh, every day, like I said, for the last 70 months. Uh, you, you spoke about doing some stuff in the Philippines. Yeah. Um, you're always talking about uh, going here and there and helping out. It may just be to mow some grass. It may be to bring some food. But uh, yeah. tell us a little, you've, you've got a lot going on. Huh? Well, you know, what we have seen since, uh, it's, it's been amazing. Uh, I've got a friend here, Evangelist Kathy Johnson, drove all the way uh, from Alabama. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget when she came uh, up to Dallas. And I, I was supposed to be working. And she called me and she said, hey, my husband wants to see you tonight. Can you meet? He said, God said if we come from Alabama, uh, he'd heal him if you met him. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I called, left my work clothes. I mean, that probably looked a little strange. We're going to my home church, got my work clothes on. But I had to tell my employees that was working with me that I need y'all to cover tonight. Something important has come up. And he was, uh, and he was healed. And just to show the power, and, and, and we've seen like over 8,000 people accept Christ. Uh, we've seen 18 people that had dementia. So it's not just about being brain dead. Yeah. Listen, when God says he does the impossible, 
think about in the book of Matthew, it talks about that when it said that all the people that come before him that was sick, mm -hmm. didn't say he healed a few of them, did? Yeah. He said he healed them all. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's never been a sickness that was bigger than the blood of Christ. Amen? And so um, I remember uh, sharing in one of the other lessons that God has taught me uh, about getting people, because everybody on this live stream, I, I need everybody to be hearing this. You might be sitting here saying, well, I'm restricted. I can't do this. I can't do that. No, you've, you've been restricted by the spirit of poverty. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by that, Pastor Mike? How can you trust God with your miracle when you can't trust him with a dollar? Yeah. Okay, how can you trust God with your miracle when you can't trust him with a dollar? And I remember when Kathy reached out to me, she said, well, God said that I need to do this for, for your ministry, for your wife. And when it was received in the mail, the first thing I was like, eh, no, sending this back. This family needs this more than us. And she said, well, God told us to do this. And then I remember that she said her and her husband had been believing for like 30-something, 40-something years for back pay from the military. And when I did what I was supposed to, when she did what she was supposed to, the next thing was that her prayer got answered. Hmm. So I tell people, the person, the first one that was healed of uh, dementia, her daughter called one night and said, if I could just get my mother to your house, God will heal her. And the first word I got, Pastor, was, Tell her, now this sounds crazy to some people, but I'm telling you, it works. I mean, it's kind of the difference. Before, the centurion said, just speak it. They didn't have phones, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Just speak it into the, into the realm. Well, the Lord said, tell her to put it on speakerphone. She mm -hmm. didn't sit here and say, why would I do that? Yeah. She said, okay. So she put it on speakerphone, started praying. Ask everybody to be praying. The next thing that happened was her mother was filled with the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. opened the door now from full-blown dementia, opened the door and said, I know you, you're my daughter. Mm. Now, not only that, this lady drove eight hours to follow me after that uh -huh. to a church in Georgia to testify. She's went to several churches. I love it when people say, yeah. God can't do that. And I'm like, hmm. And then at one church service at a New Year's celebration where I even had leaders that saying, Hadn't you heard? In the medical field, there's no hope. I'm like, huh, okay. I hear what you're saying, but I believe, I know what I've seen. And so then they turn around, this woman sitting over in the corner, they said, ma'am, you hear how crazy this guy is? What do you think? And she said, uh, I think he knows what he's talking about because I'm one of the 18. Uh, one of those hey, 18. Amen. So, so, and, and I'll tell you what, but you know what the key was? She went through this. She said her doctor told her, I've never in my life witnessed anything like this. But she shared with me after this miracle happened that before she lost her memory completely, that she had one request. See, she didn't say, God, make sure I never forget my husband. Make sure I never forget my children. Mm -hmm. She said, God, make sure that no matter what happens to me during this season, that I never forget you. Ah, oh, that's good. That yeah. is awesome, is it not? She had to focus on the right thing. Yeah, and uh, she was, she was, it, it, is a, it is amazing what God has, has done. So then when that happened, somebody got on the live stream and said, I need prayer. I said, what do you need prayer for? My husband's got full-blown dementia. He can't even go from room to room in the house. I said, wow, you're on the right channel. <laughs> I said, uh, where's he at? He's in another room. So the word that God gave was, Go get him and bring him into the room. So she went and got him. She said, what do I do now? I said, tell him that you love him. We're going to pray. Watch what happens. So we prayed. Mm -hmm. The next day, this was what was so awesome. The next day, a guy gets on the live stream named Dean Stillwell. Mm -hmm. A lot of people on the live stream knows who I'm talking about. Okay. He says, hey, Pastor Mike, will you pray for my son? He needs a physical miracle. Now, I'm sitting here like, now, wait a minute. This can't be. This is the guy that we prayed for. I mean, what's the odds? Dean, where you live? Virginia. Okay, other guy lived in Virginia. Dean, are you the guy we prayed for last night? He goes, yeah, I have full-blown dementia. He said, my wife told me to reach out to you because she said, you prayed for me last night. And I got my memory back. 
doctors told him he had to stay on the drugs, all other stuff. He said, I ain't listening to none of y'all. I'm trusting God. <laughs> but what's so amazing was he was healed. His daughter was in a bad relationship. In other words, she was in a relationship uh, with another woman. Mm -hmm. And God gave me a word for not just her, but the other one happened to be in the house. Mm -hmm. And God gave a word for her. So uh -huh. then all of a sudden she's like, ah, I think I'm going to try your Jesus. Yeah. And so that was cool. And then the boy had had three operations and none of them worked from a small child. And now he's like 15 years old. And so daddy just says, well, wait a minute. If God can heal me, if God can give a word for my daughter, I think, I think everything's getting ready to look good for my boy. Mm -hmm. We prayed for the boy. The boy cried out to daddy and said, daddy, you got to come see this. The miracle's happening. It's unfolding mm -hmm. right now. And the dad went in the room and said, oh, my gosh. <laughs> my boy just got healed. What none of the medical profession could do all these years. Yeah. God done it in a moment. Man, and all of this is from, uh, you know, connections through your, uh, through your live yeah. uh, stream. Yeah. That is something. That, you know, uh, a lot of the social media is, uh, is a lot of trash in it, I, you know, but yeah. then there's a lot of good in it, too. I mean, and uh, yeah. you're one of those that's, that's doing the right thing, doing some good through it, uh, connecting with these people that, that are just need to be connected with God. And, uh, you know, that's... That's what it's all about, man. It's, it's yeah, just connecting I, and getting with God. Pastor, I had a guy that told me one time, he said, I hope you ain't upset with me. I said, what? He said, well, you said you wanted to minister to uh, the satanic. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. He goes, well, I shared your name and everything into a group. He said, I think they pulled your profile in and they've got you on the hit list. <laughs> oh, man. And so all of a sudden, a few of them get on and... God, God even give me their code. In other words, uh, the, the, and I know John back there is doing this, could probably relate to this, but mm -hmm. a lot of them is like, how does he know what names we're hiding under? Holy Spirit said he'd give it to me. So, you know, anyway, the guy got on there and he was a head guy. And I was watching some of this take place. I'm like, a lot of people don't realize how bad this is. And I'm talking about lawyers and doctors and other people that's involved in this. Uh -huh. Uh, and, and some of it was the pedophilia, all the other, and the head guy got on there and he said, what are y'all doing messing with this one? Oh, we're going to terrorize him. They mm -hmm. called me a Jesus freak and said, we're going to wreck your life. And even sit there and said, tell your wife to get on here so we can see what she looks like. So we can start working on her. And, uh, one of the things they said was we're here for the couch auction. So I had a couch on the back porch that's dilapidated. I'm like, it ain't no auction. It's free for you. If you got enough nerve, if you're bold enough, come on down here. I've anointed it with oil. I'm going to load it up for you. Yeah. I said, if you believe it, you know, if you believe that Satan's your God and he's big and bad, come on. I mean, I ain't going to hide. I'll tell you exactly where I'm at or we can meet somewhere. And so the guy that was the main one got on there and he was like, okay, get off of here. Leave him alone. This is not going to work. Mm -hmm. He's not going to cower like the other ones cowered. Yeah. Because here, here's the thing that I'll say. Some of you might know uh, friends or especially the children, the teenagers. I would never want a teenager saying, Pastor Brian, we thought Pastor Mike was real. We can't believe that he did this or did that. Mm -hmm. See, to me, this is important. Yeah. I'd rather lose my life than to cower oh. over something or to settle for anything that would not be approving of Jesus because I don't want to bring no shame to his ministry, to his calling. And, and we are called to be examples for these young people. And it means a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you'll never see me just like, uh, I, I think that when you see some of these leaders that get caught, caught up in uh, alcohol and drugs and some of the other stuff, and uh, God, God will expose. He says in his word, does he not? Mm -hmm. I will take those things that are done in secret and I will expose them. He, he's looking, he, as I said earlier, he's looking for some Elijah's that will mm -hmm. go out there and say, you know what? Uh, word says, matter of fact, it's a scripture. No greater love than a man has than willing to lay down your life mm -hmm. for, for another. 
And I know some people will say, well, I don't think that can be done. Well, they are people doing it right now in Afghanistan mm -hmm. that are choosing to say, I will not deny him, even though it costs them their life. That's right. Yeah. You know, and uh, you, you were speaking a lot on not cowarding, uh, about being strong, basically. And, and um, a lot of people, I don't know if they know what, what the 1.9 stands for in the, uh, in the title of, of, of this ministry, but it's, it's Joshua 1.9. Uh, you know, where he doesn't just say, hey, you maybe ought to be strong. He says, I command you that I not tell you, be strong, Amen. be courageous, do not be afraid. And why? Because I'm with you. Yeah. God's always with you. So, you know, when we feel those times where we're going to cower down or, you know, we feel like the devil or the, the Satan's beating up on us. You got to remember, God's right there with you. He's going to help you. He's going to get you through. What, so what, stay strong. Yeah, what message does it send? We've got parents in here. We've got parents on the live stream. Could you imagine that your child comes up and says, I know that you could. I just don't know that you will. Mm -hmm. See, that's where the Lord, when he gives his word. In other words, that's the way a lot of our actions are. We know that you can, just don't know that you will. Mm -hmm. And that's because the enemy convinces us we're not worthy. Well, listen, we're not, we're not worthy in ourselves. I used right. to tell people mm -hmm. all the time, I'm hopeless and helpless in myself, but Christ Jesus in me makes me unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the, that's the reality. And that if we understand the word, this is what I love about it. Anybody can bring me a symptom mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you the answer. Uh -huh. It's the word of God. The Lord says, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's right. But not only will I give you a scripture verse. See, this is so easy that the enemy could sit here and say, I don't play cards. What you got? Well, you know I ain't got nothing. Well, I know that. I mean, you've already lost because I've got the royal flush. Uh, and no matter okay. what you push in, you've lost. I like now, that. if you want, it's kind of like this. You can go all in. We're in this now. Mm -hmm. Or you can play your little games like spiritual chess. But at any time, the, the Lord's going to call checkmate. As I was sharing uh, today, that, you know, what we're witnessing this day and time is just like, I love when you said the Old Testament, New Testament, okay? Yeah. Old Testament, Pharaoh. I mean, if Pharaoh had this do over again, do you think Pharaoh would be sitting here saying, it took 10 plagues for me to figure this out? Uh -huh. No, you had it figured out at number one. That's right. But you just, the word says... God hardens your heart. Mm -hmm. So you had to go to number two, number three. Well, that's what's happening now. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the words that God gave me, Pastor, was America shall vomit for what it's done. Uh -huh. And America is looking pretty clueless right now. Mm -hmm. and, but it's a simple solution. It's just like everything else. So if somebody was to say, Pastor Brian, I got a question for Pastor Mike. Cancer, leukemia, being uh, dementia, whatever then I give you a scripture verse. And then I give you an example. Amen? And if somebody sits there and says, what does America need? Well, nothing's changed. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. All of those out there, I love it. It says, if my people who are called by my name, he's not talking about all the ones that's totally against him. He's talking about, I just need the ones that say they believe me to mm -hmm. step up. That's right. And guess what? He's so amazing that he might even give us a word like he did Gideon. Mm -hmm. Got too many, Gideon. Well, see, you can say that when your word says, I am the Lord thy God. I have no opposition. No one can oppose me. Or the other one I love is, he who sits on the throne laughs at his enemy that's at his footstool. See, we get all bent out of shape thinking about what we're going to do. And the Lord's like, I got this. Just, just uh -huh. chill. It's not yeah. as bad as you think it is. Amen. Uh -huh. And, and I like that you said that we, we need to step up sometimes. Um, uh, I see the church today a lot as like a sleeping giant. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the numbers are there. The people are there. But we're just kind of slumbering around, you know. And uh, what would you say is, and I know you've already hit on it a little bit. What would you say is, your, is the role of the church today uh, in this, this prophetic, this world, it seems to be very prophetic looking right now. Yeah, I, I love this. How many of y'all know the story about where the apostles, they brought all the overflow to the apostles. Mm -hmm. Said they put it at the apostles' feet. Said the apostles distributed out to the point that the people 
lacked what? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. See, we get it all mixed up thinking about what well, government is our answer. No. What, what can government give us? Social security check? Can government, can government guarantee you that you can live forever? No. no. Can government guarantee you that you can lay your head down and have peace? No. Oh, goodness. You know what? I see, I see John back and I'm like, this is going to be as neat as being on highway on Franklin Boulevard and speaking it out, right? God gave me a word and said, hey, Tony's ice cream sales are going to triple. And they mm -hmm. did. They tripled. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I don't care how many of y'all get mad at me. I'm just telling you what God told me to say, and it's going to happen. Call those things into existence. But you know what? The reason I said what I did, and there's a little bit of humor in this, government can't even guarantee you that they can get everybody out of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just speaking a truthful fact. Whether you look at this and say natural, or you say, oh my gosh, I can't believe Pastor Mike just got political with us. Uh -huh. Well, listen, Jesus said, give everything to Caesar, it belongs to Caesar. And he said, give everything that belongs to God, God. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, he also says that, you know, and, and I'm a big proponent of this. I've took a lot of flack from people over this. But listen, uh, my mom, my mom, when she come back alive, part of the testimony was that when she was gone, that God allowed her to witness hell. She mm -hmm. said the torture in hell was unthinkable. People were begging to die to stop the pain, and they couldn't. But let me tell you this. My mother said, judgment, 2015, judgment is coming on America for the killing of the unborn. And she said, and God is not pleased, and he will not be mocked. Mm -hmm. So when you look at some of the stuff that I shared, uh, and it's been spot on. Yeah. 2019, December, the Lord said, tell them that because the gospel has been watered down, I've allowed this to come against the church. And that is what happened out of China. And I, I still stand by the word that God gave me, uh, that this was created in Facebook. If you don't like it, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, you get over it, right? Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and try to hit that button that says I'm going to shut him up. And, <laughs> and it might work for a little bit, but I'm coming right back. Yeah, Amen. come on. But um, uh, I will tell people, mm -hmm. put your faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I can tell you right now, if you don't have Jesus, you're not going to have peace, brother. No. You know that. That's and right. without Jesus, it, it does feel like it is hopeless. Amen. Mm -hmm. But as you were saying, the role of the church, I would say, church, get a backbone. Get a yeah, spiritual backbone. That's good. Uh, they are people... When my mother says that people are begging to die and we can't be straightforward with people, mm -hmm. even to the point that I can say, uh, and I had a, somebody get on me the other day about that and said that was too, too harsh for me to quote uh, Matthew 6, 15. And that was, but if you forgive not, the heavenly father says he will forgive not. Mm -hmm. That's not my word. That's not your word. That's not That's Pastor right. Shannon's word. That's in the book of Matthew. Right. So why would we not want to tell somebody? If you've got somebody getting ready to jump off a cliff or jump off a bridge, are you going to just sit there and say, yeah, I understand it. Go ahead. Nah. Nothing I can do. Or are you going to sit there and say, you know what? This is not the way God wants this to end. That's right. There's hope for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. What I love about it is this. You can take the person that feels that they're the most broken, and God can take that person and do great things with. That's why I tell people all the time, Pastor, let, let my spiritual ceiling become your spiritual basement mm. because I want so much more for you. Yeah, I Amen. like that. I like the way you put that. That is Amen. nice. You know, I was, uh, it's funny, um, you know, I know we've been talking about doing this for about two weeks now. And uh, I know you have uh, some involvement with the, uh, the real family from the Breakthrough movie. Well, I was flipping through the channels yesterday, yeah. and guess what movie was on? Breakthrough. breakthrough. I mean, you know, out of the 50, channels on TV, all the movies that could be playing, that movie was playing. And so, I mean, I had to sit down and watch, but I think that was just confirmation that, that we, we really needed to sit down and, and talk and, and uh, just share with people what God's been doing. Um, it, you know, and it goes back to obedience, you yes. know, I mean, I think we're hitting on that over and over is you're just being obedient and walking in faith, obedient yeah. and walking in faith. Yeah. John's uh, miracle breakthrough happened three weeks before my mother's. I was out sharing in churches and somebody said, did you hear what happened in Missouri? I said, no. 
So I reached out to the media, reached out to everybody. The only one that reached back out to me was Pastor Jason. And we become uh, friends. And so I was like, I want to get you up here. I, I, I really need to get you up here to Mount Holly. See, a lot of people, when I go places, guess what? Hey, what would you say if I told you John Smith come to, is willing to come to uh, Mount Holly, North Carolina? Are you kidding me? That could happen. It's already happened. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people just didn't want to say it or, or speak about it. And then a lot of people got all caught up. And I remember I talked to Jason because twice it got canceled. And it was out of our hands because the state canceled all of the travel and everything. Third time, I said, I'm hearing from the Lord, this, this, this can't be canceled no more. Mm -hmm. And what's strange, not strange, what's awesome about all this, the picture of the cross and the angel, all of this happened all in the same time. Yeah. And so I told uh, Jason, I said, uh, this is supposed to happen. And I was sharing with him that, you know, it was going to tie into what's happening in Charlotte and so forth. And then some things happened there where politics got involved. But I, but I remember that I had a pastor call me and he said, uh, our elder in our church, his sister just died and she's in Atlanta. True mm -hmm. story. I said, okay. He said, and I told everybody in the church, because here's what they said. Put it on the phone tree, make burial arrangements, she's dead. Mm. He said, don't you remember Pastor Mike and why he shared? He's been at our church three times. Yeah, I, I, I remember him. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm going to call him. You go back there and believe your sister going to live again. Uh. So I got on the phone, called Jason. He called John Joyce, and we started a prayer chain. 30 minutes later, what do you think happened? Corner come in there thinking he's going to sign the death certificate. Same uh. way with my mom. Can you imagine that? Done been back three times. Third time, he's like, I'm telling you that we're taking the body off life support. Mm -hmm. And the third time when he's in there, she sets up in bed and says, you ain't taking me nowhere. But let me tell you where I've been, Doc. <laughs> you know, and uh, this is the part I love, too. You ever, you ever seen anybody that's been dead for three hours give uh, education to a, uh, what do you call it, neurosurgeon expert, you know, mm -hmm. with the brain, because he's supposed to be the expert? Yeah. And he starts it off like, hey, how many fingers I got? And she said... You got four fingers and a thumb. Let's get to this point. Don't waste no more time. She said, you know what? You got an opportunity to get your life right with God right now. <clears throat> nice. And if you don't, it's not going to be good for you. And he looked. And I'm sitting in there watching this. The other doctor's weeping and crying. And she said, uh, you know, you know what you're dealing with. And then my brother in the room says, Mom, are you seeing things? Can you see what I'm going through? And my mother tells my brother, she says, son, it's time to get off the fence and quit playing games because mm. right now you out. Mm. You're out. And, I, and I'll tell you what, I'll never forget when he hit the floor crying out to Jesus for forgiveness. Now, the other doctor asked the expert, you got any more questions? I mean, because she'd been brain dead for three hours mm. she shared all the way back after she got through with the four fingers and a thumb and who the president was then she went and talked to him about her childhood days and then she started prophesying over his health uh -huh. and i was like man this is pretty this is this is neat pastor yeah i'm like you don't get to see this every day uh but uh he we couldn't even keep him in the room he had to get out and go that's something when, when the word of God deals with doctors. Now, I love the nurses because the nurses, I think the nurses understand it. The doctors are all caught up in science and so forth. So if there's any doctors on here, uh, I know a doctor that his life changed. And what's so amazing, it was him, not the pastors, that when my mom was declared brain dead, it wasn't the pastors that said, don't give up, don't let them pull the plug. It was the doctor that said, we need a miracle. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I feel like God is getting ready to do something for your mother. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That science only gets you so far, <laughs> you know, and uh, I think we were talking earlier. It's, uh, you know, God created everything. So, of course, he knows all the loopholes. He's not limited to what he created. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times we, we place God in, in human limits. And, you know, that's, that's completely the wrong thing to do. So, 
Amen. It's a, nothing is impossible without God. You know, as you were sharing that, I was thinking about this. Okay, it says that creation awakes in the book of Romans. The sons of thunder to come forward. Mm -hmm. Talking about us. Can you imagine that the tree out there, it don't have to sit here and say, well, my root base is over here and it rained over here. I'm in trouble. Or the grass. The Lord says, if I'll do this for the, 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 the flowers of the field and for the animals of the air, mm -hmm. how much more will I do for you? Yeah. The love that I have. And when, when I see that, I'm like thinking about what I share with you a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. I love this. I've seen it on Facebook. So everybody watching on Facebook, it's a true statement. Uh -huh. Animals, unlike humans, do not allow the dumbest to lead the pack. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to see a stupid squirrel out there leading uh, other squirrels mm -hmm. on where to go bury the food, which r reminds me, I'm glad talking about that. Uh, one of the thing, another miracle that's led a lot of people to Jesus is this. My dad... After my mom had passed on and went into eternity, my dad called me and said, son, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? He said, I was cutting a tree up here at the house, and I cut the tree down, and I heard some crying, some uh, animal sounds. Well, he went and found a nest. The mother squirrel had left. He cut the tree down, and the mother squirrel had left the babies, and they were abandoned. And they had just been born five. Mm -hmm. five. So... Uh, these, these five squirrels got something on Alvin and, and the rest of the chipmunks, okay? So they, uh, they uh, my dad thought, okay, I'll, this was in February too, years later. And my dad said, well, I'm just going to put them back in the nest, put them on the porch, it'll be okay. Well, the problem was the mama didn't come back, and the five babies froze to death. Mm. And it devastated my dad. So my dad brought them in the house, and he was praying and he was getting ready to uh, bury them. And he said he heard a voice mm. at the kitchen table said, don't give up on them. So he went and got a hairdryer and started thawing them out. And he said, okay, they still didn't come back alive. So he's going to put them in a, a tin box instead of a shoe box. And he heard a voice again say, don't give up. And then he put his hands on the five squirrels. He said he told the Lord, let them live, but take me. Mm. Because if I hadn't cut the tree, they'd be alive. And he said he couldn't even see. He had his hands on him. He was crying so hard. He couldn't even see anything. And then all of a sudden, he seen one move. Hmm. And then he started to pray. He said, Lord, not one, five. Not one, five. And all five. You can imagine my brother witnessing this. <laughs> and so my dad go calls the, uh, the, the vet and says, what I do, what I do. Call this lady in Lincoln, North Carolina. She rescue, does rescue for animals. And she come and met my dad, got the five baby squirrels, nurtured them back, uh -huh. and released them. And she said, there's something different about the faces on these things. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, they've been touched by the most high. Uh. But I remember on the live stream having you know, thousands of people on and people say, tell them about the five squirrels. And people will be like, man, tell me about this Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want to hear more about this Jesus. Yeah. Amen. So we've seen a lot of people accept Christ uh, through, through that one. We had a lady on there last night. First time she got on live stream, Thanksgiving 2016. She said, man, it's the first time, the first holiday I ever went on. Man, it, it, it blew up so big. Mm -hmm. The whole system went down yeah. on that. We had like 20,000 people trying to get on Thanksgiving night 2016 and the whole thing shut down. We went mm -hmm. back up and another 20 come on. And I remember that the woman got on and said, I don't know how I found you. She was on there last night. She said, I was getting ready to commit suicide. I don't want to live anymore. Mm -hmm. Before it was over with, she rededicated her life and all of her children rededicated her life the and she family. got on there last night just to say i've never forgotten you i've never forgotten you or the ones that were praying so you never know who will get on people from pakistan uh, indonesia uh, philippines all over the country all over all america the yeah uh, get on and ask for prayer and what's so amazing uh i, I sit here and i think about this um uh, 
pastor, that one of the most, again, through the phone, one of the most amazing miracles, the woman, and it's the key about getting yourself out of the way, right? How about this? Everybody that's watching has probably heard this, and if you haven't, John F. Kennedy was famous for saying, ask not what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? That's right. Well, the Lord gave me one and said, tell the people, ask not what the kingdom of heaven can do for you, but what can you do for the kingdom of heaven? Okay? Get yourself out of the way because what I found out is when you can really trust God's word, where Joshua said, as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, mm -hmm. knowing that he says, I'll give you the route of escape. When he says, uh, if God is for you, who can be against you? Word after word after word, nothing, Luke 137, nothing's impossible with God, okay? That, that we can lean on the word and get our answer. And so when I think about that, the woman uh, husband, uh, Carmi Leggett, not husband, the woman's brother, Jim, has had a massive heart attack. I don't know at the time that he's got Parkinson, but now he's in a coma. She gets on the live stream and says, pray for my brother, Jim. The doctor says that they don't think he'll wake up and he's never accepted Christ. And I'm concerned about this. So she didn't ask, pray for me, pray for my son, pray for anything. She didn't ask for nothing individually. She said, pray for my brother. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sitting here scribbling a lot of times when I'm on the live stream, I'll be watching stuff and just taking a pen and making notes. And all of a sudden God gives me a word mm -hmm. and I've learned don't analyze what he's telling you. Share it. Take it by faith. So God says, when are you going back to the hospital? Why? Go to the hospital. Put it on speakerphone. We're going to pray. As we pray, God's telling me as I pray, your brother will wake up. And then he's going to say, everybody's going to say, tell him, uh, tell Pastor Mike, tell everybody about his mother's miracle. And then he's going to cry out for salvation. Kathy was on there and she remembers all this too. Mm. So she said, but he's in a coma. I said, don't matter. Trust me. Trust me on this. So the next day she went to the hospital and I said, are you there? She goes, yeah, but I've really struggled with this because see, she was disabled. Her son uh, had been hit by a drunk driver many, many years ago and had part of his brain had been removed. So he was uh, disabled. So she said, yeah, I'm here. Thousands of people on the live stream, they wasn't worried. They was like, we're on here for a reason because we've uh -huh. done seen this too many yeah. times. We're going to see it again. So she said, I'm here. And then started to pray. She types in, oh, my God, he just opened his eyes. Mm. She didn't even get a chance to say, tell him about your mama. Everybody on the live stream said, tell him about your mama. The next thing happened, he jumped out of bed. Now, he's been in a coma. He jumped out of bed running and shouting up and down the hospital. Okay, a 92-year-old man said, what the world's going on? Take me up there. They wheel him up there. The guy, her brother, asked for Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then he leads the 92-year-old man to the Lord. The two nurses that wheeled him in were slain in the spirit in mm -hmm. the hospital. They accepted Jesus Christ. Seven people all together accepted Christ. And I'm sitting here like, this is good. What do you think was going to happen? Uh -huh. <laughs> So, so, yeah, we've seen uh, a lot. I mean, here's, a, as I shared with a pastor asked me the other day, he said, you're, you're on me pretty bad about what you're speaking. This is really stepping on my toes. I said, well, that's mm -hmm. not, you know, it's not me. It's the spirit. Yeah. Then a pastor said, well, let me ask you something. Because you really, I mean, if you really believe all this, and this is a pastor. And he said, you ever walked on water? I said, no, but I said, pastor, is it my fault or God's fault? Mm. It ain't his fault because he <laughs> says right. I can. So I promise you it ain't his fault. And uh, I said, have you ever seen anybody barefoot ski pastor? Because I have. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah. So you know what? I've seen them pull them off the dock or off the bank or whatever. But, you know, I, I appreciate so much. That God keeps you in humility, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you know what? Yeah, if I was out there, might you get it'd be easy. And I praise God. Don't don't get puffed up. One of the things that anybody that's been on the live stream knows that in the very beginning, when people used to say, "Well, hey, this is amazing," and start trying to point attention towards me or somebody, I'm like, "Stop that! Don't even go there because you're getting ready to mess everything up." Uh, God does not share His glory. Amen. It doesn't have to, and He won't. 
Uh, Smith Weber was you said all the time when they said, hey, Smith, and Smith said, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put me on a pedestal mm -hmm. because uh, you're hurting me if you do that. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I think that that is the key to everybody that's watching. If true faith is interceding for those that don't know what you know because you know God's got you. Think mm -hmm. about that. Okay, that you can go. When you think about somebody in the natural realm, you say, okay, hey, how about Michael Jordan in basketball? Who's going to put everything on the line and say, I can take him one-on-one? -on -one? Mm -hmm. Okay, I love this one too. Yeah. Babe Ruth, one of the greatest baseball players ever played. That's right. But everybody can sit there and say, Babe, why are you smoking cigars? Why are you staying up late at night? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And he can say, I'm still outperforming the whole league. Okay, okay, his, his character had nothing to do with his ability. Yeah, it could have been better, but when God's sitting here telling us to do things a certain way, and he does, there, there is power, Pastor, in specifics. Mm -hmm. He had a specific design for the ark, for the, cup, for the ark, uh, the, the uh, temple, had a specific design, and he loves detail. So when God sits here and says, I want this done, like for instance, you know, he told them to march around the wall, didn't he? Seven times. Seven times. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would happen if they would have said, nah, you meant well, but six would get it done. I know. Uh, what happened when he told David, don't number the men? Mm -hmm. and David said, we're going to do it David's way. But what happened when David said, there's, there's power in obedience mm -hmm. and there's consequences of disobedience. Look what happened when God told David, go get these stones. And guess what? I'm going to have you hit him right between the eyes. He didn't even know what's happening. Right. And David was probably sitting here like, hey, I might need to put a, uh, something over my eyes. I'm going to hit you from behind or whatever, through the legs. Or I mean, that's the confidence that we can have. Yeah. Letting him know that not only is my God taking you down, but I'm going to take your sword and take your head. Mm -hmm. That's when Goliath wanted to fight, right? When he realized yeah. David done talking smack. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. You know, uh, I was, uh, I, something just came to me whenever you were talking about the squirrels. I want to go back to the squirrels. Yeah. And um, this is what I heard. I heard that's the kind of love that Jesus and God has for us. But you're just dead, right? Yeah. He said, uh, he said, let the squirrels live and let me die. Uh, yeah. And you're probably like, well, squirrels, it's how insignificant are five little squirrels, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, most people, we shoot them, we eat them, you know, it's, yeah. But, you know, that's, that's the love that Jesus has for us, that God has for us. We may seem insignificant. We may seem like just a bunch of little baby squirrels, but, but God died for us. You know, Amen. Christ was willing to die for us. Amen. And uh, that, that's exactly what I heard. I was like, man, that's, that is a true picture of, yeah. of the love that God and Jesus has for us. Yeah. When, um, when, awesome stuff. When I lost, I saw a video with a squirrel drinking water, you know, when somebody had a bottle of water and it came uh -huh. up to the person. But I thought about this. When I lost my favorite dog and I was devastated and the Lord reminded me, if she would have been raised up, you would have took it for granted. Thinking your position, who you are, you're entitled mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. But you need to be humbled. Mm -hmm. And humbled. then when I thought about that, Bert, when he told me, he said, I'll remove every obstacle that gets in the way. See, I was more concerned when I'd come home from work that I wanted to spend time with her and play with her than to do things as far as read and, and so forth. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can take... Uh, you're in and out of your husband, your wife, your children. You can make things an idol. Uh, mm -hmm. To me, That's an right. idol is basically anything that you're yeah. choosing to, to do more than you are with, with God. And the word that the Lord gave me, Pastor, was this. And, man, this is powerful. If you could ever learn to love others unconditionally as That's your it. favorite dog has loved you, That's good you would change the world. Yeah. Yeah, have, have and, a love like a dog. Yeah, have a love. <laughs> and, 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 you know, that's what we have. You know, we got Bella. I call her team mascot Jesus. Uh, God is so good. God is so good, uh, which I'm going to get back and share something else about the other miracle that took place. But <clears throat> to, to cover this, I believe that when you're praying and you're being led to the Spirit, where you want me to go get my groceries? 
What do you want me to do? How, how, what route do you want me to take on the way to the house? I was at work and the Lord said, just go home. Okay. Say, so, am I going down Hickory Grove Road? Yeah. You ain't stopping. Go home. I'm going home. Coming down the road and all of a sudden I see something that looks like a little black toy in the road. I'm like, what the world is that? Get a little closer. I'm like, oh my gosh. This looks like a kitten. So I stopped the car. Car's just flying by, running by, but didn't kill her. Mm -hmm. And I run up and got her, and here she was, four ounces, mm. crying. Her eyes wouldn't open. She couldn't even sit up, and she was crying. I put her up on my chest. I said, little girl, you're going to live. God's seen to this. I got home. My wife got home. She works a bit. She goes, uh, what have you done? <laughs> I said, what did you want me to do? I couldn't leave her, you know, there. And so uh, that night, uh, she was struggling bad, and we took her to, to the vet uh, the next day, and they said she's got upper, upper respiratory infection, and they can't eat. And if she don't eat, she won't live. And the doctor told me, he said, you got 50% chance that she'll live. I never forget as I just wept and cried. Somebody, a lot of people were like, boy, he's a big old softy. <laughs> but I sat there and wept and cried, and I was on the live stream, and everybody said, don't worry about us tonight. We'll be here tomorrow. You take care of the baby kitten. I said, God, you didn't give me this kitten in the middle of the road to take home and her die. Uh-uh. This ain't happening. I don't care what the doctors are saying. This little baby girl is going to live. Mm -hmm. And this little baby girl, uh, when she got a little older, she would jump up on the table and people see the live stream. I'd have the Man of Faith hat or John 316. And Shadow would jump up on top of my hat and I'd be sharing the gospel. And she'd be sitting up on top of the hat looking into the... And uh, camera. Video camera. <laughs> now she's 17 and a half pounds. Mm. So she's, uh, she's big. But getting back to the other, uh, I think it's in Zephaniah 317 or 316. It says, I, the Lord will rejoice over us and sing over us with gladness. Pastor Shannon was sharing that the other day. Now, this was what was so amazing. I love it when God sits here and gets people's attention. And he really got my youngest daughter's and my brother's attention over this. They're sitting at the house. This is before she's going into eternity. Now, this is well after the miracle. And I'm like, Mom, you're going all over the world with me. No, I'm not. Yeah, Mom, we're going to go all over the country. This is your miracle. She says, no, I did what I'm supposed to do. I told you. Mm -hmm. And then she said, when all of you are prepared, I'm out of here. I'm going on to be with Jesus. And I was like, okay. And I remember my oldest daughter said, Dad, why are you praying a certain way? You think God's going to listen to you or listen to Mama? I said, okay. And so the day before she entered into heaven, she was in the room, hospice care. And my brother's, my youngest daughter said, do you hear it sounds like singing? And my dad was like, it can't be singing because Granny's in the other room. And the doctors are saying that she's going to go tonight or tomorrow. So it's the heat and the air. A little bit later, my daughter said, no, Paul, Paul, sounds like singing. He said, well, it can't be. So they all go into the other room, flip the lights on. My mom's mouth's not moving. And every now and then, just a shallow breath. Mm -hmm. But what they witness is this. The first song. The Battle Hymn of the Republic. Huh. What is being sung and nobody can figure out how it's happening because it's coming from the body, but the mouth's not moving. Mm. Thine eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. When my mom said judgment was coming. The second one was uh, <laughs> Amazing Grace. And the third one, How Great Thou Art. My brother said he fell on his knees and basically said... I know I don't see you, but there is a God mm -hmm. because how can this happen? How can this happen? My dad was like, it sounded like, an, like an angel that was singing. And my dad was like, God, is that you? Is that an angel singing or is that you? And before my mother passed, when she looked up, she goes, I see you in the light and you're so amazing. Hmm. You're so amazing. So when I tell people, when I told my mom, she goes, no, son, I've told you everything that you need to know. Now you pass it on to the others. 
And so what I tell people when they say that I feel like all hope is gone. You know, Pastor, uh, part of the prophetic, I, I remember the ladies, Amber Holstein, if she's on here watching from up north. I remember somebody got on, the Lord said, tell the people on here, somebody needs a miracle and it's outside the norm. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. And then when I seen the name, the Lord said, that's her. Yeah. Tell, go ahead and tell them that if they'll speak up and say, that's me, watch what I do. So the person says, I think you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, talking to you. Then the Lord says, tell her, to, and write it down and show it to her, but tell her to go ahead and tell everybody what she's believing for. She says, I'm believing for a child. So my wife's with me. I said, honey, open it up. She opens it up and says, child. Okay. Go ahead and tell them what the gender is going to be because I got the answer for that and too. So she said, I want a girl. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to remember the people, church, others, and everybody's telling her you're not going to have a child. You can't. She said, a girl. Now, God didn't tell me what you're going to call her. I can tell you that right now. But I'm telling you, you're going to have a child. Well, you know, we've been believing, believing, believing. A little bit later, she got on. She said, I don't know. You know, the person was sharing. This has happened several times. Uh, doctor said, I'm expecting. I don't know whether I tell everybody it calls. Possibility of miscarriage. Oh, no, no, no. This is, this is carrying the term. Uh -huh. Amen? It, it has. And so... Again, step out and step out in faith. The Lord yeah. says in His Word that to know Him, you have to come to Him by faith because He's Spirit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when people say, "Well, I believe," really, see the time's coming. So there might be some people that might say, "Are you kidding me? I thought this only happened in Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh -huh. and other places." You can see the day. Well, we know it will. Yeah. Just don't know when, but we know that it will in America that you're going to end up having to make some tough decisions mm -hmm. and you're going to have to stand by faith. And you know what? When you sit there and you take the attitude, again, all of us has got children. Can you imagine if your child told somebody else, my daddy is able to do this? No doubt about it. He could provide. Mm -hmm. I just don't know that he will. That's the way we are towards God. Sometimes we sit there and say, well, I know the word says that he will. Why can't you believe him and, and take it for what he says? God's not a liar. And you know what happens? The enemy talks us out of our blessing and what ends up happening. God's ready to move and the enemy brings all this doubt. And what do we do? Yeah. Well, I don't think God's going to do it for me. And the enemy's like, okay. God, you I see you. that? Uh -huh. He just denied your blessing. Uh -huh. the enemy knows the word too, right? That's right, he does. Oh yeah, you know, I, uh, man, this we could we could probably sit here all night long, but I'd like to I like to open up some questions to the audience if, if that's all right with you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I like to do that. Uh, uh, like we usually do, they can't hear you on the uh, on the live stream unless you got the microphone. But if if, if you ask a question, we'll we'll repeat it. Yeah. And uh, let's see what we got. We got John in the back here. He's probably got something online here. Pastor Shannon wants to know, what is the biggest hindrance for revival? Actually, the question is, what's the biggest hindrance uh, for revival in today's church? I, I believe the biggest hindrance is the lack of faith and, yep. and, and the commitment. See, I, I, here's the thing that I'm going to say, and I shared this the other day. I can call Pastor Shannon and, and say, hey, could we talk about this? And he's going to, yeah, absolutely. And then you're going to have other people. See, Pastor Shannon is not intimidated by the power of God. That's right. He expects it. There's a mm -hmm. difference in that. When you expect God to move, you don't care if the Lord uses. You know, as he's been showing me, teach the children how to pray. What's the name of the child back there? Terry. Who? Terry. Terry. Well, Terry, let me tell you this, which I know a Terry that... Who had a house that was almost burned down and the love of God caused people to, to want to. And is this the one you're taking care of? Okay. Terry, the Lord says that he takes the orphans and makes them sons and daughters of the Most High. The Lord would even say to you right now that don't get caught up in what you've been through. Okay. Because 
man and woman, mothers and dads, sisters and brothers will let you down. Mm -hmm. But the promise of the Lord thy God, our most high, is I will never leave you nor forsake you. I promise you this. If me and you got to hang out a little bit and you saw what I know you're going to see, you'd be sitting here saying, hey, I like this. Mm -hmm. I like this because I'm going to sit there and say to you, what would you say if you seen somebody that couldn't walk as paralyzed get up out of a wheelchair and walk? Mm -hmm. It'd be pretty exciting, wouldn't it? Yeah, see, you see that? I like, yeah. And you know what? We had somebody on the other day, a young girl. The dad, the mother said, pray for my daughter. She don't want to go to church no more. Yeah. And the, God gave me the word and said, okay, if you could see this, what would it do? And the person said, it changed everything. Guess what happened? A guy on the live stream watching said, well, why not do it? Pray for me. I'm in a wheelchair. And the girl said, I'm praying. The mom said, I'm praying. God gave a word and said, get up and walk. Well, I believe that one day God will let me walk. Mm -hmm. Get up and walk now. I believe God will let me walk maybe next week. Why are you going to wait till tomorrow to do what you can do today? God's telling me to tell you, get out of that wheelchair. No more excuses. You're in the no excuse zone. Get up and walk. A few minutes later, he got on there and said, I'm crying. Guess what? I'm walking. I'm walking. <laughs> and the little girl got pumped up about it too. And the little girl went back to church. And so I would say to Pastor Shannon and everybody on his live stream that, you know, nobody in here, if whatever you do for a living, I know John's in technology and so forth. Can you imagine, John, you having to deal with somebody that's all they're doing is telling you, I can't figure it out. I can't do it. I'm going to yeah. walk you through it again for the fourth time. Yeah. I still can't figure it out. And it's kind of like, well, you want me to write it down? I, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's excuses is yeah. what, what it is. But um, fivefold ministry, uh -huh. some to be prophets, teachers, evangelists, and so forth, apostles. Okay. We need to be the mindset, as I was sharing before. I want my spiritual ceiling to be somebody's spiritual, uh, my, my spiritual ceiling to be somebody's spiritual basement. I'll say to everybody that's here, everybody that's on the live stream, okay, it would tickle me to death. It would if somebody come up and said, you know what? I'm going to pray that God's going to give me the heart and the commitment and the wisdom and strength to do what you do. I hope to see you in a spiritual sabbatical mm -hmm. because there's been times, Pastor, that I have wept and cried and said, God, this is a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. If you want to take this and give it to somebody else, I'm okay. And then the Lord said, others don't want to do this. Yeah. And I've even had people, that's why I, I appreciate so much your pastor. Y'all, y'all doing things basically seven days a a week pretty close yeah that is worse at and you know why mm -hmm. i'm going to show the proof of that you've seen nothing but just progress mm -hmm. you've seen rewards you know the first time i met this young man he come off the platform from playing because when he called me i said i know who you are mm -hmm. i said i remember the night god gave a word he come off the platform and god told me he said i'm gonna do awesome things to this man and he come off the platform and he said, man, I love Jesus and so forth. So when he called me, I'm like, hey, this is full circle, uh -huh, you yeah. know, because the day before, believe this or not, this is neat. And if Pastor Shannon's watching, I shared this the other day with him. I was sitting here like, God, when are you going to open the door that I get to go down there and share? Mm -hmm. At Finish Line Christian Center, this is an amazing ministry and what you're doing. <laughs> Next day he calls. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I know. He said, yeah, you remember me? I said, oh, yeah, I remember you. And what is neat, just like, you know what, when you talk about uh, commitment and so forth, when Pastor Shannon said, you know, John's here uh, because Pastor Shannon said, okay, God gave me a word. He called me and said, hey, would you be willing to meet me? And several people did go over yeah, the, on, on uh, uh, Franklin Boulevard. Okay, John was on the live stream watching that, came over there, ended up giving his life to the Lord and mm -hmm. is here involved. And then Joshua met, I met Joshua over and here's the key. If you will just take the time to let people know that it's not about us. When John said, "Will you talk to Joshua, Josh, Josh said, Hey, are you, can, can you meet me now? What am I going to do? Tell him, well, I got a lot of plans, brother. People, I, I tell you, if people say, can you call me? Can you talk to me? Whatever. So met him over at Tony's. Met him over at Tony's, got to talk to him, and so forth. He got plugged in here, and others. I'll never forget what these two young guys said. Yeah. 
when I first met him down here, this one especially. Uh-huh. He said, Pastor Shannon, how many young people you want in this church? Because we're getting ready to overrun this church with a young generation. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Pastor Shannon's like, hey, if we got to go to multiple services or whatever, we good, yeah. right? And, and, and I'm believing that. I believe that what you're going to see here, there's no doubt. The Lord says, declare the will of the Lord and it shall take place. That's in mm-hmm. Job. Declare the will of the Lord. Speak those things into existence mm-hmm. as if they are. Okay? Let me All tell right. you how simple I believe this is. Mm-hmm. You're going to see downtown events not be, I listen, alive after five. They ain't seen alive. They ain't seen alive. How about spiritually alive after five? Yeah. Okay? You and what you're going to see is you're going to see people hungering. And even when breakthrough come or Pastor Greg Lott, what you're going to see is people saying, I want to make this place a place of destination, Mm -hmm. not just a location, but a place of destination, meaning that you're going to see, I believe in the year 2021 and 2022, that you're going to see events. And it, like I say, it's not going to be just a live after five or whatever Friday night. It's going to be people crying out to the Lord Jesus Christ here. And, and you know, what I believe uh, pastor is going to take place. See, there's a reason that question got asked. It's not going to be just what do we need uh-huh. to see for revival to break out. What does Mount Holly, North Carolina need mm-hmm. to see? How many of y'all know this? I'm getting ready to share something. Y'all know how Mount Holly, North Carolina got his name? No. Y'all, anybody here heard of Mount Holly, New Jersey? No. Because of the manufacturing? The founding fathers of Mount Holly, North Carolina, wanted to bring something close so that's what it was about. Mount Holly, New Jersey was what led to Mount Holly, North Carolina. Hmm. Okay? But if somebody said, Holly, what happened if you drop a L and Mount Holly becomes holy? Mm-hmm. Okay? So I believe this. Declare the will of the Lord and it shall take place. I have, there's no doubt. You've seen what's happened here uh, just in the short season. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen when everybody realizes? Because there's a difference. There is a difference when you're willing to stand and not cower. And I appreciate that Pastor Shannon said, listen, you want to wear a mask? Come. If you don't want to wear a mask, come. Come. Mm -hmm. What you're going to hear is you're going to hear a pastor that's not going to allow the word to be watered down. That's That's why this church is prospering because the pastor has made the commitment that I'm going to stand for what God's word says no matter what. No matter what. Good deal. That's good stuff, man. I tell you, we got some questions out here. Any more questions? Everybody pretty good. I think you covered a lot of the bases though. (laughs) Yeah. I think most of them here is seen as far as on the live. You know what I love too? Yeah. I was at Stanley uh, eating. Guy comes up and says, he says, honey, Pastor Mike, I'm sitting here thinking, Man, I, I need to know him. This is not going to end good. And he goes, uh, I just get on a shadow watch, but uh, I want my wife to meet you. And he mm-hmm. said, how long has it been now? And then somebody else, you know, uh, we've been out in restaurants or other places. And somebody will say, hey, you're the guy, especially if I've got the hat on. They'll yeah. say, you're the guy that's out sharing uh, mm-hmm. the word. And you know what's so amazing about this? And I love the, I love the excitement uh, that John and Joshua's got too, uh, of, of sharing the gospel because you know, the Lord is what he's taught me. We can't get caught up in thinking, okay, I'm special, man. When he decides to use somebody and what I love about this is the Lord said, teach the children how to pray. This is one thing that we're missing. You know, we was talking about pastor Shannon said, what well, we need, listen, you get the children excited Mom and dad get excited. Grandpa, mm-hmm. grandma get excited. Yeah. But here's what I love about the children. I guarantee you if I said to Terry, Terry, and if Terry really knew me, I need you to jump off the roof right there and I'm going to catch you. How many of you know mothers that you sit there and talk to your child and say, hey, I need you to jump into mama's arms. That child will jump into mama's arms because that child trusts mama. Mm-hmm. That child trusts daddy. Well, what happens spiritually when we jump into our spiritual father's arms because we trust him and we believe his word, it changes everything. <clears throat> now, hadn't always been like this, okay, for me. I will tell you that before this happened with my mother, uh, we was doing a fundraiser to raise money for uh, 
children that wasn't going to have a Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I needed to raise money because we used to own the old mill down here on Woodlawn Road. And I got called out by my mom who wasn't really going to church, but I was a drummer on the praise team. Every time the doors opened, I was faithful. Mm -hmm. And they was uh, doing an auction and we needed so much money to pay a company bill. And I said, hey, it's worked out good. We got our money, but the kids, we're not going to be able to help but 50% of the kids. Mm -hmm. Well, the guy come back to me, pastor, and said, what a day. I'm like, what do you mean, what a day? I said, yeah, it's pretty cool. 50% of the kids get a Christmas, and we took care of our bill, and we're going to be able to keep the company going. The guy goes, no, you don't understand. I said, what do you mean I don't understand? Mm -hmm. He said, we helped 100% of the kids. I said, well, the only way that could have happened is if my mother gave y'all all our money. And he said, that's what she did. <laughs> now, this is several years before her miracle, mm -hmm. which explained a lot of things. Because I went to my mom, and I said, mom, I need to talk to you. I know you didn't just do that. She goes, man of faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, called you, you out. You need to get to pray. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, if you believe God can do anything, you need to be praying for that money I gave away. Mm -hmm. And so she said, yeah, I gave it away. And so one of them was to pay Duke Power. So I called Duke Power and I said, uh, I need to explain something to you. Don't cut our company power off. I had the money, but my mother gave it away. Praise God. I get somebody on the phone that says, well, bl bless your mama. That was a good decision. Not one of those that said, are you kidding me? She said, um, can you get me $100 towards this bill and me give you an extension and give you some time to try to work this out? I said, yes, ma'am, please don't allow them to cut this off. So I went back to my mom. Mm -hmm. We was owed money by a couple companies, a lot of money, but mm -hmm. it didn't look like we was going to get the money. My mom said, get to praying. That's what she was like. You call, you tell everybody you're a man of faith, you're in that church every day. Can you not believe for this? Uh -huh. And that's what she did. So... I, I told my wife, I said, honey, I need you to go to all the women in the church and ask everybody to be praying. And she did. <clears throat> and I was about the only one, I think, that had a problem with my mom giving all that money away. Because everybody else is like, I think what your mom done was cool. About a week later, we got a check for a whole lot of money mm -hmm. that we didn't think we was going to get. Yeah. And my mom had to remind me, Pastor, why was you fretting? Why was you so bent out of shape yeah. over that? And my mom said this to me. I'll never forget it. She says, son, what you need to understand is I'd rather those children have a Christmas than you have a company. Mm. And she told me that. Now, you talk about something that, that stings when you're in church. You're the drummer on the praise team. You teach Sunday school, junior high and high school. And then you realize at that time in the early 2000s that you don't have the faith to heal a head cold. And the Lord reminds you that you got no faith. Uh -huh. you, need to, you need to buckle up. And so when did it change my life as a, a pastor that does a lot of outreach? When somebody said, <clears throat> when his mother was raised from the dead, it changed everything. And a pastor that knew me said, no. When he was in the Word of God 10 to 12 hours a day, that changed everything. Mm -hmm. God was getting him ready. And the Lord told me, he said, you're going to see the things you prayed and hoped for that you have never witnessed. And I said, you're talking about the resurrected power. Because I've seen pretty much all the other and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty awesome. Man. So, yeah, I love, to, I love to share. And my mm -hmm. mindset is if I'm at Home Depot, Lowe's, it don't matter. And, and I really love to share with the ones that's getting ready to tell me to keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Because I like that when you got a hat on and God gives you discernment and you're like, yeah. Man, they could bite a nail in two. They're so mad. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, you know, anybody needs to be inspired? Well, that's a stupid question. Who don't? Well, I'm mm -hmm. glad you said you do because now we can talk. Amen. Yeah, and, and I think you've, you've been hitting on it all night as uh, it goes back to, to having, I guess you want to call it boldness or just having that faith, true faith. Yeah. You know, a lot of, and I think that's a lot of what's wrong with the, the church, why I call it a sleeping giant, is we've lost that faith. You know, uh, we like to talk about having faith, but, uh, you know, when push comes to shove, a lot of us don't have the faith that we should. Yeah. And uh, we, we need to just harness ourselves up to God and, and understand that uh, we got to get a hold of that faith and just, just ride it out. Just keep going. Well, where, where is our faith? You know, mm -hmm. as the Lord showed me one time to share with a woman, she said, uh, been praying for 10 years, can't have a child. 
what do you do? Love to read, praise God. Uh -huh. And I remember I gave the woman some of the books, the Bible, but I was giving her the books of ministry of Smith Wigglesworth. And I remember she said, well, I, I didn't read all three of them. Really? So I started asking questions and answering all the questions. I said, okay, yeah, you have. And uh, all of a sudden we're at a restaurant eating. And Lord says, tell her she's carrying a child. Mm -hmm. And I said, so you're, you're, you're carrying a child. Don't tell everybody. I've had miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. And the doctor told me I'm like two weeks. No, no, this is okay. You're going to carry this one. And she had the child. Then she had palsy on her face that paralyzed the side of her face. And the Lord had me to tell her when she was discouraged, you could bleed for the child, but you're struggling with this. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, bring your Isaac to the altar. Bring your Isaac to the altar. And that's tough sometimes because, see, we all have some faith. Even to, you have to come to faith by salvation. So, but isn't it amazing? The Lord says, if you have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. One of the, I was at a healing crusade in Georgia years ago. The Lord said, what is the strongest power known to man? And if I was to ask y'all out here, what would you say that would be? What is the strongest power known to man in the natural realm? What would anybody say? Money. No, I'm talking about power. Okay, the nuclear bomb. Okay, what is it? Plutonium, rich uranium. And here's what the Lord said to me. Okay, which is which? What do you mean? Well, the power I give you can move the mountain, mm -hmm. but my power is environmental friendly. Mm -hmm. See, you can take a nuclear weapon and, and move a city, move a town, move a mountain, yeah. but then you can't inhabit it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, you know what you missed on this is this. I said, okay, God, show me. Because somebody asked me at the revival, they said, do you know which is which? And I, first I said, no. And I said, oh, I do. It's been there all along. What is fasting? Fasting is purification. What mm -hmm. is enriched uranium? Purification. Okay. And prayer is the plutonium is what the Lord was showing me. And the Lord was saying, if you apply these you can say to the mountain, be gone, and mm -hmm. it'd be gone, but yep. you can inhabit that land. Instead of the fearful, well, we can't do that because look at how many places they've tested nuclear sites and say, well, yeah, you can't ever go there because of radiation and so mm -hmm. forth. I mean, again, we, we use radiation to, to kill cancer cells, but guess what? No side effects. Power of prayer. Kills yeah. cancer cells. We got somebody just shared, testified the other day mm -hmm. uh, that actually works at Duke Power. Uh, had a brain tumor. They told him it's cancer. Six months later, he's healed. Mm. So the mom was on there sharing. So again, it goes back to this. Um, what would Carl Smith Wigglesworth to say? I am so close to Jesus that whatever I ask, I have according to mm. 1 John 5, 14, 15. I always like to put it like this. If we approach the throne room with boldness, talking about that boldness, mm -hmm. step one. And then if we ask according to his will, says that he hears us. Then it says if he hears us, he does it. So why in the world? You know, it's like watching an athlete saying, man, that golfer went out and won that championship. Why can't the golfer go out there and win the next one and the next one and the next one? You know what they'll tell you? Just like athletes, mm -hmm. it's 80% here. Yeah, it's 80% between the ears and what the God's telling us is, Hey, believe it, walk in it. That's right. Did Jesus not, how many times did Jesus say, ye of little faith, mm -hmm. how much longer do I have to tarry with you? He's talking about his own disciples. And y'all right. know the story of the woman that brought her child and said, can you help me? Mm -hmm. Now this is right after the, the disciples have called out the other people. You remember the part when they said, Lord, Lord, we, we, we want you to know we corrected them down there. They're speaking things in your name and they ain't part of us, but they're seeing miracles. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, if they're for me, they're not against me. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't say this, but it's kind of like you can read between the lines. What do you think it was probably like? The woman brings a child. Jesus says your disciples couldn't do nothing. They prayed, nothing happened. Well, what if Jesus would have said to the disciples, why don't you take this child down to the one that you corrected because there's power down there because they're speaking my name. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think it comes back to 
we get caught up. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, uh, I've been told, you know, he used to be a plumber. Uh -huh. His wife was the evangelist, Polly. Smith worked at the Salvation Army, mm -hmm. okay, for Booth when he was doing it. But you know what's so amazing? I was like, I want to read everything I can about him. I want to read about his childhood. They said his grammar was broken, but one day they asked him to speak. And he's out there amongst the crowd and he can't even speak because he's scared and his grammar is terrible. Mm -hmm. All he could do is weep. But they said as the tears fell, people cried out for Jesus for salvation. People were healed. People coming out of wheelchairs walking. Because see, it was never about Smith. It was about Smith introducing them to the Jesus that changed mm -hmm. Smith's life. There you go. And that's what God wants us to do to introduce people to the Jesus. We sing that song, right? Look what the Lord has done. Mm -hmm. He saved my body. He healed my mind. He touched me, oh, just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Amen? Amen? And that's what we need to be doing. Man, that's good. I, I tell you, like I said, I think we could, we could probably hang out all night and then talk. But uh, I think I'm about ready to wrap it up. Okay. If, you, if you are, um, yeah. uh, I tell you, it's, uh, I, I would say that you guys... Uh, Gain some wisdom, huh? Man, I tell you, I do appreciate you coming in and spending some time with us. And, uh, you know, like I said, you can, can always catch us through Finish Line uh, uh, Facebook page. Um, you know, Wisdom 1.9 has a group page. We also have a YouTube channel. So there's uh, a bunch of different ways to, uh, to su subscribe. There's ways to, uh, to be part of the group. There's ways to get to watch this. Um, so... Tell your friends, tell everybody, and uh, that's how you can do, uh, or how you can watch the Wisdom 1.9, which is every first and third Sunday of the month. But, uh, but Mike, you're on every day, so tell us one more time where they can find you. you can find me on uh, my uh, personal page, Mike, Mike Johnson, uh, my wife, you'll see a picture of me and my wife. Probably going to catch me on a little bit later tonight, because there'll be a lot of people be saying, hey, you're going to get on here, you know, because some people will be on here at six. The other thing is, too... One of the questions I was asked, I've got a close friend that's from Indonesia that does an orphanage. And he is actually coming into the States. And he's wanting to come and visit some of the churches that I'm close with. So it could be April of next year. So one of the questions that they just asked me is to find out, because he wanted to meet Pastor Greg Locke too and Pastor mm -hmm. Shannon. So I know Pastor Shannon's going to be here, but he's like, can you find out if Pastor Greg Locke is going to be visiting any time in the month of April because we're getting the plane tickets together. Yeah. This guy has an amazing ministry. And that's one of the other things that we do on the live stream. Mm -hmm. From January to August of this year, we've raised about uh, 8,000 plus that we've sent out to other, like the orphanage in Indonesia, uh, Philippines for the roof of the church. And we've been fortunate enough that people that have had uh, emergencies pastor that uh, one woman, um, her child's got cancer and her, uh, she lost her heat. And so God gave a word and said, okay, ask the people. And what's so uh, neat about in Indonesia, you know, it'd be easy to sit here and say, well, and I did at first. Well, Facebook's blocking so many people from getting on here. Is this the right time to do it? And the Lord said, go ahead and announce it. It's kind of like mm -hmm. a Gideon thing, right? Go ahead and yeah. announce it. Don't worry about what Facebook's doing. And mm -hmm. believe it or not, with 90-something percent less people, we raised more this year than we did last year. Yeah. And so uh, God has been good in that re re respect. I've even had people, I've got a dog, uh, Annabelle, that was diagnosed. She's another one that we took because somebody else said they couldn't take care of her. Found out she had diabetes. And so we've had people that's reached out. Even Shada, the one that the, 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 the miracle cat. cat. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, somebody sent me some big box of stuff from uh, Chewy.com. I'm like, mm -hmm. I told my wife, I said, somebody get your credit card. I got three big boxes on the porch. Uh -huh. And believe it or not, no, that's not what happened. People on the live stream said, we want to send this to you uh, in honor of Shada. So... Uh, there's, there's a lot of good mm. and I'm, I, I just want to say again to everybody on here, I'm telling you, there's nothing like investing in, see God's currency is not our currency. That's our good. currency is money. Mm -hmm. His currency is faith. That's right. So which one do you want? Do you want a deductible faith 
Or do you want to sit here and say, well, you know, I'm dealing with this and it's going to cost me $1,500 deductible. And what God might be saying to you is this, listen, I don't need your money. And that $1,500 do not change anything because I own it all, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And so why don't you trust me? And so that's, that's what I'm excited for. You, uh, you know what's neat, too, i got to tell you this. When we was raising the money for uh, Breakthrough, 98% of the money come from the live stream. 3% mm -hmm. come from the, the church. I'm not saying that in a bad way. And I really wasn't pushing that because we had the people that was on, on board. But what was neat was uh, my buddy that was helping me. Pastor Shannon was coming to our house to help, and he got lost, which a lot of people get lost trying to find my house that's back in the woods. And so my buddy's at the house with me, and so we hear this, clear as could be, three knocks. I said, go get the door. We're on there taking people's names and stuff that's helping with breakthrough. He said, okay. I said, it's probably Pastor Shannon. Go let him in. Uh -huh. He goes, the door comes back, and he goes, you ain't believe this. I said, believe what? He said, and he used a word I've never heard before. He said, weirded. I'm weirded out. I said, what do you mean weirded out? He goes, Mike, there ain't nobody there. I said, there's somebody there. Everybody heard it. So, knocked three times. He goes, ain't nobody there. And so the laptop has got the view of the front door. And I don't know, Kathy, if you was on there. That, you was, wasn't you? You was on there. Pastor Shannon's trying to find my house. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, do you not see what's going on in your house? I'm like, what do you mean? I turn around and look, and you can see a man in a white robe, clear as could be, at the door. Everybody's like, that's not an angel. That, that, that could be Jesus. Damn. And so one of the things that I've seen, and that happened, and I'm going to tell you what my buddy was like, I can't believe this. And then all of a sudden, a few minutes later, I said, go to the door. That's Pastor Shannon. <laughs> and it was. He said, man, I've been running up and down the road. I said, well, Lord, Lord paid a visit to, to uh, introduce you before you got here. Mm -hmm. and, it was, and it was cool because it's on video. So the people got it, shared it out, and so forth. And so that's the kind of things, the expectation, uh, Pastor Brian, uh, of, of believing that. I mean, if you say you believe it, could you, could you imagine? Because here, here's the thing I'm going to say. If somebody says, Pastor Mike, will you pray? Mm -hmm. I promise you one thing you will learn from me is if God asks me to stand down or if God says, okay, this is not for you to pray over uh, I'm, or I'm not going to move, God might even be saying, I'm going to use that person and you need to go over and tell them my choice is not to use you right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I've seen in Georgia when we was working with the youth, and sharing with the kids. And the Lord said, "Ask, pray for the children, then get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Pray for the children, get out of the way. Man, I'm telling you what. Nothing like seeing somebody can't walk, walk. Mm -hmm. But nothing like what, seeing a child pray for that person. And that child tell them, get up and walk. Yeah. Because the children, teach the children how to pray. Because how many of you have sat here and you believe for something? How many of you have sat here and said, God, I'm praying and I'm believing. And the first thing you hear. Remember what you did in 1977? Who do you think you are? What's he going to say to a child? You remember when you cry because of toys in the floor? Mm -hmm. child going to sit there and say, Mama, who's this trying to talk to me? And the child going to say, You know, you need to go. I don't know who you are. All I know is Jesus is my heavenly father. And he says, You got to go. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to close this in prayer. And, uh, man, it's been a good evening. You guys have enjoyed yourselves? Man, it's been good. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you again for this opportunity to, to just conversation about you, Lord God. Lord God, I just ask that you just bless each and every person that is, uh, that is either watching on, uh, on Facebook or, or whatever uh, social media they're watching on, Lord God. I just ask that you bless those that are in attendance today, Lord God. Lord God, I just ask that you give us that boldness, Lord God, and that true un unwavering faith, Lord God, to, to do what you need for us to do, Lord God. Help us, to, help us as a church to, to be a stronger place for you, Lord God. Lord God, I ask that you continue to work through 
through Mike and his, uh, his live stream, Lord God, just uh, I thank you for all of the miracles that you've, uh, that he has seen and that you have, uh, that you've shared through, through that ministry, Lord God. And I ask that you continue to bless that Lord God, continue to bless this ministry as well, Lord God. And Lord God, again, just, just strengthen us in every way, Lord Jesus, for it is in your name we pray in love. Amen and amen.